Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just Two Acres Farming. This episode 20 of the Farm All Super C Restoration, we're gonna finish putting her back together. Wheel weights ready to put on and seat parts, more seat parts, fasteners, battery cover, bolts for the wheel weights, seat parts, miscellaneous little fasteners and doodads, and the decals. We're gonna put them on, vinyl cut decals in this episode. So by the end of the episode, all the tractor will need is for the fluids to be added and then fire it up in the next episode. Let's get the heavy lifting done first thing and get these wheel weights on. Is this the left weight or the right weight? I can't remember. Hopefully they're correct. <laughs> oh boy. Where did you go? Mr. Lockwasher, where are you? You went to hide. Huh, here it is. He didn't want to go back on. These, of course, were originally square head bolts in here, and I replaced them with hex head bolts. I can't even get a thin wall socket down there, so I'm just using a punch to hold the head of the bolt in place with a little leverage as I tighten them down. In case you were wondering, each of these weights weighs about 145 pounds, and that would be around 8,200 kilos and the tractor itself just bare with no weights on it is about 3,000 pounds And that translates to 17.2 kilograms Yep, I'm a metric system expert scratch my paint Just my opinion, but I don't think these old farm walls look complete without at least one set of wheel weights on them the next thing we're going to do is put this seat together and I have a new spring. I always replace these springs when I do a tractor. Just a little extra insurance from them breaking. I've got a new set of rubber bushings for the shock and the seat swivel. And I've got tire soap, which I find helps getting these bushings to seat in place. So the first thing I want to do is get the bottom end of this shock absorber put in and it gets a bushing on either side like so. And I'm going to lube these up a little bit. Sometimes they go in easy, sometimes they don't. So a little lube helps a lot. Soap I should say. Well get in there. This goes in here and it's a tight fit as it should be. And this pin here, lube her up a little bit slides through there we go now we could put this assembly together which winds up going in here gets a bushing which I'll just put in like that maybe we'll give her a little bit of lubricant then that bushing goes in there and then we got to put a bushing on the other end like so then we lube these up because this can be a tight squeeze that's for sure then this has got a slide in here well, this one's not too bad tire lube helps immensely sometimes they will barely fit in there now I'm leaving everything loose for now till we get everything together then we can tighten it up now we can get the top of the shock ready and it's got a funky bushing bolt thingy that runs through it. So we've got our usual rubber bushings. These are all the same bushings, shock and seat pivot. We got another bushing on the other side. And then we've got this, I don't know what it is. It's a thing it goes on there. Well, we're not going to put that in yet because we got to get this spring in. Oh, fun, fun, fun. I've used, let's see, I've used coil spring compressors on these. I've used zip ties 
to work them down. Nothing seems to work all that great, but we're going to try it this way this time. Just put some weight on it. And then try and get the shock absorber up. Get in there. Right, maybe Hillary needs to come out and sit on this for me. I know what to use. You Seriously, you can mount this to the tractor and then have somebody sit on the seat. But I'm out here working alone. Be a little creative. And of course, you got to get this started, which it's wider than it should be because of the bushings. What I did is I put a C clamp in here and squeezed these two sides together and then was able to push this down here. So now I just got to get it into final position. She's getting there. Yeah. I decided to go another route with this and take the top off of the shock or disconnect it here. Take the pin out is what I need. And then I can free up this bottom end of the shock, top end, bottom end, and work it in to the more difficult place first. And it ain't easy, but it's going. You're going to require a lot of touch-up. You're getting there though. I'll tell you, I got more patience than you do. Ha ha! Bolt! Go in! <laughs> Gotta put the bushings back in. And then get this pin in here. <sighs> And there we go. One bouncy seat under a lot of compression. Next I can put the flip back seat mechanism on and it just bolts on here and allows the seat to flip back like this. So you can protect it from the rain and also you can drive standing up. You can also flip it down, I forget, like this I think, and kind of lean it backwards on the seat as you're driving. I don't know, I never do that. One thing to note is that these get really loose over time. All these rods in here egg out the holes that they ride in. So what I did years ago is I took this all apart and I got the right size bushings to drill out the holes that these go through and then put bushings in and tightened it all up that way. And I think I might have got made new rods for it too, I don't remember, but it makes the seat nice and tight because when they get loose, you're kind of <laughs> around in the seat as you're driving around. Same with this, it, you know, if this, if this uh, pivot pin gets loose, the seat kind of does this when you hit bumps and it's not a lot of fun. So everything's nice and tight now. We just got to put the bolts in it and then we can get it back together. Four bolts and nuts in, connected down there. One piece. Now we can go ahead and put this on and the funkiness doesn't end yet because this seat is designed to slide back and forth and there's a spring catch for these different pinholes depending on how tall you are and where you want the seat. But in order to put this on right, you got these bolts which don't go on this way. They come up from underneath and everything's got to be shimmed properly so that you have a little bit of clearance so that you can slide the seat back and forth. This bolt gets a big washer under here. And then it gets a small washer on top of that to leave some clearance. And then it goes down on here. And then it gets a lock washer. And a nut. Then we just have to do that three more times. Get out of there. Don't fall in. You're not supposed to do that. Washer. <laughs> you didn't listen to me very well. Lock washer. Nut. Now I can put a new seat on this silver canvas with a little brass grommeted drain hole. The old seat was rotted out right down here, so it was no good anymore. I got this from Steiner. 
very nice. This is not too hard to put on. It just goes on like, <laughs> like this. how this is. I would say that's about the right position. Next I'm going to put the lever on that controls the PTO and the belt pulley. And then I'm going to bend over this cotter pin. And then the belt pulley shield. We got bolts down here. Now a bunch of little stuff. We got this pin that goes in here and lives in here for the draft control linkage should you have it engaged. Ugh. I forgot to paint that off to brush paint it. In this system which secures pins in the rock shafts, this side never had one. I had to order a new one. Goes on like this. Kind of clever. Gets a cotter pin. There. I got some new pins here. All you do when you want to hook things up to the touch control system is you can pull the pin out. Let's get this in here. Is you just turn this and then you can pull the pin out if the paint wasn't holding it in. Hook up what you want and put the pin back in. Put the other one in. Now it looks complete for the first time in at least 20 years. And we got this snap-in cover which provides access through here to the grease cert for the throw out bearing. This cover under here which lets you get into the bell housing and clean out the inevitable mouse nests to get in here and check timing if you need to check timing. These hold down bolts for the battery box lid. And the battery box lid, although I'm not going to secure this, nor hook up the battery till we're ready to start the tractor up. We'll just leave her there. This spacer and clip, which hold down the hydraulic hoses here on the platform. And this little wiring clip here which I want to use to corral this touch control heat gauge here. About like that. Decals. I have a set of vinyl cut decals here for the tractor. Um, I prefer them over the older style Mylar deca decals because the Mylar decals leave a transparent back layer behind things. Vinyl cut, it's just each letter with nothing in between. So these are definitely the Cadillac. They cost more, but I think they're worth it. Things that bug me about putting decals on old farm is the sets are never complete. And sometimes they're not correct either, which in this day and age, I don't understand why somebody can't manufacture a complete set of decals. We've got all the information we need. There's plenty of original examples out there to copy decals from and make them. And to place the decals and to know which decals are right and which aren't, I use this book, it's the Farm All Letter Series Originality Guide by Guy Fay. I have one for the Letter Series and I have one for the F-Series tractors. And in the back of the book, it's got decal placements, original International Harvester blueprints for decal placements. The decal end of the book is a little bit hit or miss based on, I think, what they could dig up in the archives. The Super C is going to be similar to the Super A, which there are diagrams for. So I'm going to be using that for most of them because the Super C is not individually listed. Well, it's listed in here, but it doesn't have the diagram to a company which shows placement. It just shows what decals should be there. And of those decals that should be there, I probably have about half of them here. But that's what I'm going to work with. Let's start with an easy one, the air cleaner. Put that tape on there. Now the book says it should be three inches down from the top of the air cleaner. Now that you've got it secured with tape, you can take off the backing layer, right there. This is the same kind of knife that I use for spreading out body filler. Work it right around. Use the knife to make sure you get that sticker stuck good. Deckle.
and then peel off the facing layer. And that's all there is to it. Ah, oh, beautiful. Oil filter decal, one inch up from the bottom. This drawbar warning goes two inches from the top of the seat. You know, hitch only to drawbar, not the steering wheel, this sort of thing. This is a sticker for the light switch, ODB, which stands for off, dim, bright, the different settings. The kits always come with one that also says LHDB, which is for a cutout regulator, and that means low, high regulator output to the generator, and dim bright for the lights. So you got to use the correct one. This is a three position switch, not a four position. This is the PTO warning sticker. Stop PTO before you get off of the tractor. And then this top sticker is the brake lock warning which says if you're going fast down the road lock the brakes together or you might go off the road. And that part is not supposed to be on there, so we have to take that off. These don't come off very easily. All right, on to the big decals. This one's supposed to sit centered from where this curve starts to here, so it matches where this L stops to the seam here. And the bottom of it sits right above this, where this bead comes out. Now for these big ones, what I do is fold them in half here and get, we want to get the backing paper off. Do that. Don't touch the underside of the letters. Cut this backing paper off. And then work it down with the paddle so you don't have any wrinkles. Everything is stuck. Then once you got that side all adhered, you can pull these center pieces off. And you can do the other side. Dun, da, da. Beautiful. These decals should be centered within this radius and have a half inch gap from the raised portion. So we gotta go a little ways here. Yep, she's all back together. All we got to do is put the fluids in it. There's quite a bit to that. Hand freeze, engine oil, transmission fluid, hydraulic fluid, air cleaner, greasing, 
You know the drill. We'll be doing that next time. And then after we start it, we can start working out the bugs, which is kind of phase two of any tractor restoration. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you for the next one.